Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about the centripetal force in physics, and we're also going to talk about centripetal acceleration as well. So the first thing that needs to be said about these concepts is that when do we use them? You use them when you have an object moving in a circular path like this. And the reason why is because the word centripetal literally means center seeking. That is the opposite, by the way, of a centrifugal force. Centrifugal forces are center avoiding, which actually is really a fictitious force. And I'll explain why later in this video. So with centripetal force and centripetal acceleration, it always points towards the center. The symbol for centripetal force is FC, and wherever you are in the path of this circle, it always points towards the center. The same, by the way, is true for centripetal acceleration, A sub C. Both of them have their own equations, we'll, we'll talk about them, but they always point towards the center. Now let's talk about the equations. Centripetal acceleration, A sub C, is just equal to V squared over R. It's your speed divided by the radius of the circle that you're in. Now obviously it's kind of hard to calculate your velocity when you're moving in a circle, but what we say is it's the velocity tangent to the path, and almost certainly they're either going to give that value to you in the problem, or you're going to end up solving for it, because that's what we do a lot of times in these types of problems. Now the word tangential speed just means that it's the arrow I drew right here. Even though you're moving in a circle, you pretend just at that moment that you're moving in a straight line and you find the velocity at that point. Now it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. It's actually very simple. And then for centripetal force, really centripetal force, I don't actually like the word centripetal force because it makes it sound like there's a force when there's really not. Let me be very clear. If someone pushes you, then you feel a pushing force. Right now, you feel the force of gravity acting on you, which is why you're not floating up in the air. And you're probably sitting in a chair, which means that you have a normal force pushing up on you. When you walk across the floor, you feel a frictional force. When you throw a ball in the air, you feel an air resistance force. Everything I just said is an actual force that you can feel. But if I say a centripetal force, it's not actually a force like you don't feel a centripetal force centripetal force fc is really an adjective to describe other forces so for instance you can feel a pushing force that happens to keep you moving in a circle and now that pushing force is a centripetal force same is true for the friction example same is true for any example any force as long as it's moving in a circle is a centripetal force and so what I typically say is I almost never write FC alone. I almost always write F net C. And the reason why is because it's not just one force. It's always all the forces acting on an object. That's why we say the net force. Now, by the way, Newton's second law says you can set that force equal to mass times acceleration, right? But since this is centripetal force, I need to use the centripetal acceleration. So really the equation you're going to see a lot is mv squared over r because centripetal acceleration was v squared over r and you just multiply by the mass now what i really like to write actually i don't even write this i even get more specific i say f net c is equal to the forces in minus the forces pointing out and that's equal to mv squared over r so what i'm saying is if you have let's say this wheel right here and you have two forces acting on this wheel one force f1 pointing there one force f2 pointing there then i would write f net comma c is equal to the forces pointing inward not up not down but inward which is f1 which is going to be positive minus the forces pointing out of the circle that's f2 so minus f2 and that's going to equal mv squared over r so there's the setup for a problem like that. And so the most common example you'll see with that is something like an amusement park ride. Imagine you have a Ferris wheel, a big old Ferris wheel. And let's say you're at the top of that Ferris wheel. At the top, you feel two forces. You feel one of force mg gravity going down. And you also feel a force pointing up. That's the normal force. That's the force of your seat on you. It points up. 
And so then for this example, I would say F net comma C equals all the forces pointing in MG minus the forces pointing out Fn. I don't care if they point up, down, left, or right. I care about inward towards the center of the circle versus outward. And again, that equals mv squared over r. One more thing I want to say about this. Which force is stronger, mg or the normal force? Well, they should be equal to each other, shouldn't they? No. It's because this is moving in a circle. And remember that the net force, fc, the net force, has to be pointing towards the center or else you're not moving in a circle. If that's the case, then mg must be greater than the normal force or else you're not moving in a circle. I promise you that. And so what that means in a real life perspective is that at the top of the Ferris wheel, you're actually going to feel slightly lighter than normal. And when you're at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, you're going to feel slightly heavier than normal. Now with a Ferris wheel, it's going so slow that you're not going to feel it. But theoretically, that's what's going on. And last thing I want to say about this mg is a centripetal force mg is a centripetal force because it points towards the center and fn is technically a centrifugal force because it points away from the center and remember fc the force going in is always greater than the force going out and the reason why is because if it wasn't you would not be moving in a circle so that's going to do it for the explanation of centripetal force in the next video, we're going to do some example problems with all this stuff. So please join me for that. We'll have a good time. Bring the popcorn. I'll see you there. Take care and bye-bye.